In 1834, Henry Fox Talbot creates the permanent negative. In 1837, Louise de Guerre creates images on silver-plated copper. In 1840, Bayard heard about de Guerre's method and experimented with his own photographic positive prints in an attempt to find an easier process. He never received the acclaim he wanted, the acclaim that de Guerre received. In protest, he photographed himself as a drowned man, using his method. The long exposure time required explains his closed eyes. It is the first known fictional photograph, and with it he began the trend of the photographer as storyteller and actor. 1857. Rylander began as a painter. He made his living copying the old masters, and wanted to try to do the same thing with photographs. The two ways of life is a result of this. It is based on Raphael's fresco, The School of Athens. The women in his photograph were from a theatrical group who were used to standing still, having performed in tableau vivants. In tableau vivants, a group of actors pose like statues, or paintings. The print is 31 inches wide and was made from 32 negatives using a combination printing method. It was controversial at the time because of his assemblage techniques and the nudity. Prince Albert ordered a copy for the royal family. In 1858, Henry Peach Robinson was a student of Rylander and learned his technique. His use of combination printing in this photograph is more seamless than in Rylander's two ways of life, and the drama is more subdued. The morbidity of the dying girl being represented in a medium as realistic as photography disturbed many viewers. In 1875, author Lewis Carroll produced many photographs of exotically just children, perhaps in an attempt to bring his stories to life. In one of these photographs, Carol photographed one of his favorite sitters and her brothers taking advantage of the items found in their nursery. One brother slays another, who is covered in a leopard skin rug. In 1888, Edison patents the kinetoscope. In 1898, F. Holland Day, a pictorialist, produced over 250 photographs on the subject of Christ on the cross, a tradition found throughout the history of art. Day himself plays the role of Christ in this photograph. He let his hair grow long and starved himself in order to fit the part. His photographs were met with controversy. Using himself as the model for Christ did not please many viewers. In 1902, A Trip to the Moon, a revolutionary step forward in special effect filmmaking, was released. In 1907, color autochrome plates became commercially available. In 1908, Guido Ray found inspiration from 15th century Dutch artists like Vermeer. Ray chose to set his photograph in the 15th century setting. He dressed the scene using period objects found around his house and borrowed from his neighbors. Ray also had a seamstress create the costumes. In 1927, The Jazz Singer, containing the first synchronized dialogue in a feature film, was released. In 1927 through 1938, Hiller's Surgery Through the Ages series was commissioned by the firm of David and Geck, which made surgical sutures. This photograph is based on the life of 16th century physician who treated plague victims. Hiller had previously worked in film and stage and was familiar with how to position actors and use dramatic lighting. In 1931, strobe photography is developed by Harold Egerton of MIT. In 1932, Technicolor movies are invented. In 1954, staged scenes become very popular in advertising photography in the 1950s. Bartholomew's photographs are directly influenced by the cinematography of film noir movies of the time. His photographs represent a melding of styles between motion pictures and photography. In 1964, Meatyard creates his tableaus in abandoned and ordinary places. The characters in his photographs are relaxed but grotesque, and many of them wear masks. Meatyard explains, Billboards in any art are the first thing that one sees. The masks might be interpreted as billboards. Once you get past the billboards, then you can see into the past, the present, and the future. I feel that because of the strange, that more attention is paid to the backgrounds, and that has been the essence of my photography forever. In 1976, the first solo show of color photographs is presented at the Museum of Modern Art. In 1977, for more than 30 years, David Leventhal has worked exclusively with toy figures. For his Hitler Moves East series, he collaborated with Doonesbury creator Gary Trudeau. Leventhal created gritty snapshots of German soldiers during World War II, but his actors are all action figures. The images are contrasting and sepia-toned to help with the mood of the story. The use of toys and tiny sets allowed Leventhal to have complete control over his photographs. In 1979, Cindy Sherman created a series of self-portraits of women in film. She did not portray anyone in particular, just the Hollywood types. They are all taken from the perspective of 1950s and 60s male ideals of women. 
Her characters are victims and manipulators. She uses her film stills to point fingers at contemporary culture. In 1983, Witkin pushes the ideas of complete control to another level. In his photographs, he uses corpses, fetuses, as well as models. His work is often grotesque, but also references church history. He takes advantage of the public's perception of photographs as documents. His shocking photographs are documents of the things that he sets up. He then scratches and ages his photographs to give them the appearance of age to push them further away from reality and the present. In 1990, the first version of Adobe Photoshop is released, and... Hawks was interested in melding his love for painting, photography, and filmmaking into one medium. His photographs are a representation of that. He builds and paints backdrops, and like Cindy Sherman, he is the star of his photographs. They are complete fabrications. Hawks keeps his themes simple and comedic. He is the everyman. His photos stand alone like clever comic strips, but they also tell a story. In 2001, with Gregory Crudzen, the melding of motion pictures and photography have met their apex. In his photographs, he employs entire film crews to set up his scenes. There are location scouts, cinematographers, and even catering. His large productions mirror the growing scale of motion pictures. Half of his photographs are shot on location, the other half are constructed on sets. Crudzen's photographs are gigantic, like windows into a frozen scene. In these scenes, the narratives are not specific. He wants the audience to make their own interpretations. In 2006, the Apollo Prophecies features one large 10-inch by 72-inch panorama. The image follows several astronauts' journey to the moon and back. The panorama does not stand alone. With it are artifacts from the moon's exhibition, portraits of the astronauts, sketches, and a prophecy written by ancient moon explorers. Kahn and Selesnik have managed to create an epic and complete narrative in one photograph, as well as creating their own backstory and mythology. In 2008, 